An Iranian woman disguises herself as a male soccer fan. By James M. Dorsey in supporting recent anti-government protests in Iran, both Iranian hardliners and the U.S. State Department may want to be careful what they wish for. Not only are the protests unlikely to spark the kind of change either of the two adversaries may be hoping for, they also are refusing to stick to the different scripts the Trump administration and opponents of Iranian President Hassan Rouhani read into them. For Iranian hardliners, the joker in the pack is what U.S. President Donald J. Trump decides in January to do with the 2015 international agreement that put curbs on Iran's nuclear program. Mr. Trump will have to again choose whether to certify Iranian compliance as well as extend the temporary waiver of U.S. sanctions on Iran. In October, Mr. Trump refused to certify and threatened to pull out of the agreement if Congress failed to address the agreement's perceived shortcomings. Members of Congress have been trying to draft legislation that would give Mr. Trump a face-saving way of maintaining the agreement by claiming that Iranian compliance ensures includes acceptance of restrictions on the country's ballistic missile program and support of regional proxies. It was not clear whether Washington's deeply polarized politics would allow for a meeting of the minds of Republicans and Democrats. Iranian hardliners would be strengthened if Mr. Trump failed to maintain U.S. adherence to the agreement and would likely see it as a U.S. breach of the accord. In a statement condemning the arrests of protesters, State Department spokeswoman Heather Orr projected the demonstrations as a bid to change Iranian politics. She urged all nations to support the Iranian people and their demands for basic rights and an end to corruption. In a reflection of a strand of thinking in Washington that is looking for ways change the regime in Iran, Ms. Orat quoted U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson as telling Congress that the Trump administration supports those elements inside of Iran that would lead to a peaceful transition of the government. For his part, Mr. Trump tweeted that the Iranian Goft should respect their people's rights, including right to express themselves. The world is watching. Mr. Trump and Ms. Orat appeared oblivious to the fact that, unlike the 2009 mass protests against alleged fraud in presidential elections, the largest since the 1979 toppling of the Shah that were dubbed a Green Revolution and brutally squashed, this month's demonstrations may have been in part prompted by a hardline effort to exploit widespread discontent to undermine Mr. Ruhe. An Iranian woman disguises herself as a male soccer fan. If so, Iranian hardliners may be overestimating their ability to ensure that the protesters in a host of Iranian towns and cities, whose numbers range from several hundred to a few thousand, restrict themselves to taking the government to task on economic policy, particularly price hikes and fraudulent financial schemes that have deprived victims of their savings. Various of the protests have turned into opposition to the very system hardliners are seeking to defend by demanding a release of political prisoners and the shouting of slogans, some reminiscent of the 2009 demonstrations, like "Death to the dictator," "Leave Syria alone," "Do something for us," "You are using religion as a tool," "You have ruined the people," and "What a mistake we made by taking part in the revolution." To Reza Shah, bless your soul. A reference to the founder of the toppled Pahlavi dynasty.